mind. Do you have mind, Every? Only a little bit. Oh, oh that too. About Aiden. <laughs> Aiden, do you have mind? I think so. Uh, you, the moment you say you think, so that thinking comes from the mind. So let us all for you see the transliterian below the Sanskrit uh, alphabets. Uh, I am speaking and then uh, you let it go to your ears with awareness and attention. And then we will chant together. Manohi Dividham Proktam. Shuddham cha shuddham evacha Ashuddham kama sankalpam Shuddham kama vivarjitam Again I'm repeating so you look into that how you have to recite and chant uh, Casey it was such a Siena I sing so well mm. That it so I thought better to start with this. Manohi Divinam Proktam. That is the you know, every verse has four parts. So Manohi Dividam Proktam, first part, Shuddham Cha Shuddhami Vacha, second part. Ashuddham Kama Sankalpam, third part. Shuddham kam vivarjitam. So now I will sing the first part and you have to call in response. Manohi dividham proktam. Manohi dividham proktam. Shuddham cha ashuddham eva cha. Ashuddham kama sankalpam. Her line. Ashuddham kama sankalpam. Her line again. Shuddham kama vivarjitam. When you can sing the song of Ariana, why don't you sing these verses? One more time. Manohi dividham proktam. Manohi dividham proktam. It means mind is spoken of two kinds. Second line, shuddham cha shuddham eva cha. So what are those two kinds of mind? One is impure, another is pure. And then what do you mean by a should, uh, impure mind? That is the third line. Ashuddham kama sankalpam. So the meaning of the third line, you can uh, write down the impure mind uh, is present with the desire and projection. Shuddham kama vivarjitam. Shuddham kama so it's very easy to remember the third and the fourth line. Impure mind is present with the desire and projection, and pure mind is absent with the desire and projection. So we have four, every verse has four steps. First step, the mind is spoken of two types. Second line, impure and pure. Third line, impure mind is present with a desire and projection. 
fourth line pure mind <coughs> is devoid or absent of desire and projection clear mm -hmm. everybody saying that i have a mind of short a little bit so we have a full mind so what is impure mind <coughs> first understand that what impure mind does impure mind is the cause of suffering what is suffering we should put every logic that is the beauty of these upanishads teaching so first is impure mind we said impure mind uh, is the cause of suffering right then what is suffering ask yourself what is suffering so we say we have physical mental emotional uh, suffering and even natural suffering and uh, human cause suffering are you aware of ukraine and uh, russia war mm -hmm. that is one suffering so if someone there is a flooding that is also suffering <clears throat> there is a tsunami that is also suffering but uh, so first is purely the physical suffering that is caused by the world outside that is what we say physical suffering caused by the people caused by the people world outside so this ukraine and russia war physical suffering then we say natural calamities here natural calamities what what about natural flooding tsunami etc these are two kinds of suffering. Third kind of suffering is known as mental suffering. And this mental suffering is the cause, is the major cause of suffering huh, for every human being. Whether you have 1% mind or whether you have a 100% mind. <laughs> so that is why I asked you, do you have a mind? It is said, you know, I think so. The moment you think, the moment you think, you hear, you act, it is all coming from the mind. Right? Did you understand? You think, hear, react, respond. How? Who reacts? More, every and or hidden or Casey. There are three girls. <laughs> so when you think, you hear, you react, huh? you are upset, huh? you have an anxiety, you have a duality, you have a conflict. Huh? You do you cry also? every not really not really very good and what about you hayden not really not really i like i love both of you that's very good i cannot tell whether the casey cries or not but uh, casey uh, cried when hayden led meditation today so <laughs> So, did you understand that? Uh, did you understand about the mind? We know everything by the mind. We know everything except the real self by the mind. Here, you know your dad, you know your mom, you know your profession, you know you are sitting in Casey's home. It is all about the mind. Fear. Now we go to the first line of the words, impure mind, 
caused by desire and projection. So what do you mean by desire and what do you mean by projection? You see that Casey just projected me into the television. That is one way of projection. Huh? Projection also means superimposition. Are you getting it? Did you get it? Projection also means when you look yourself into the mirror, huh? you forget it is only a projection. You see your image and you believe you are there into the mirror. How can you go into the mirror, enter into the mirror? Can you enter into the mirror? No. But I see into the mirror that is projection. I see into the mirror. Are you clear? Now I will see. Uh, what food you like? Every? Artichokes. Huh? Artichokes. Artichokes. So, you, do you feel happy eating artichoke? Yes, I do. Oh, so you projected happiness there because you like it. Did you understand? Mm -hmm. So, I have taken first the projection and then I will take up the desire. I like something, the moment, I means the mind likes some things. The moment it likes, why, huh? like means, like means what? I see the source of happiness there, there in a person, object, food item, ice cream, whatever you want to say. The moment I say I like it, but if I like it, I see the source of happiness. Right? Right? I dislike, I see the source of pain. We are understanding impure mind. So you can say, I like pasta, for example, but your mind is not craving for it. So there is no specific desire for pasta. Then you simply say, what do you like? I like pasta. Okay, I like ice cream. But even if the ice cream, I don't get the ice cream, I'm okay. I don't like pasta, I'm okay. I don't like that chop, I'm okay. So it means the liking plus desire is not there. And when it is not there, it is desire and projection are absent, then you don't do not suffer. You are always happy. Aiden, do you want to be happy all the time? Yeah. Really? So you have to get rid of the impure mind. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. Did you understand? <laughs> so our master, this master who wrote these, this verse, this is the first, I think, first verse of Upanishad. So impure mind has two things. First is the desire. Second is projection.
Aiden, did you insist your parents to get something? I use the word insist. My parents were placing the Walmart order and I really needed some pencil lead. So I had them get this. <laughs> Pencil is utility. Pencil is a need. You see that there is a need and desire. Need to study. Need to study uh, any gadgets. Need to have food. But if I insist on a particular, on a particular food, on a particular item, that is desire. Are you clear? So if I get upset <clears throat> by what I want from the world outside and I don't get, that is desire. I get it. I force it. I get it. That is also desire. Did you understand? I like it, so I force to get it. I don't like it, I want to get away with it. So there is a pressure. So that pressure is coming from desire. Why? Why? I already explained you, projection. That I see that thing is the source of happiness in my life. Clear? When I insist, when I get into anxiety, when I get upset uh, for getting anything in the world, that insistence, that pressure inside me, with a like or dislike, causes the desire, and that desire springs the source of happiness outside, that is projection, and that is the impure mind. Why we are, why we are learning about impure mind? <laughs> why we are learning about impure mind? In the in your life, why we are learning about impure mind every day. The moment you wake up, your mind is in anxiety, duality, reaction, upset, tiredness, fatigue, fear dissatisfaction, what else I can say? You have a desire, your mind is impure. <laughs> Did you understand? Why we are learning about impure mind? I'm upset because of desire and projection. There is no other reason No, mom, you didn't buy me uh, an ice cream. You know, I've been telling you. You didn't hear it. Ice cream. Desire. Because I like it. Because I find the source of happiness. That source of happiness is the projection. Did you get it? Will you like to be upset every day, anxious, reaction, anger? <laughs> Aiden, every... No, we do not. <laughs> so why the master? Now you understand why the master explains the mind is of two types spoken of as of two types, pure and impure. 
So the, ma the master wants us to understand if I get upset on anything in the world, it is only because of desire and possession. And desire plus possession is the impure mind. Do you want to live with impure mind? <laughs> See that you are both saying no. I have to talk to your parents one day, every week. Maybe Casey will talk. <laughs> How many times you were upset, you feel tired, you feel anxious, you feel reaction. <laughs> And the simple question is, simple fourth line is, uh, what, what fourth line is? Uh, fourth, fourth line, shuddham kam vivarjitam, the pure mind. Now we will understand the pure mind. Huh? Pure mind is devoid, is absent of desire plus projection. That to be understood clearly. Huh? Another reason also that, you know, I have written something that may appeal to you. person with a pure mind is always with a calmness, softness, gentle voice. I have to speak loudly. Otherwise, you know, I speak but to, for you to listen. So peace and smile. You never forget your smile when you have a pure mind. Are you smiling? Always. Always, correct. Hey, sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. I'm really focused. What do you mean? Focus uh, can also go with the smile. <laughs> so knowledge, attitude of self-giving. So first thing to understand, the pure mind. I have not written and that I'm going to uh you can write down the pure mind the pure mind able to separate able to separate what desire and projection from the real desires if i say real desire and what is real desire the physical desires, what is physical desire? Physical desires should be, should be, uh, I think, you know, I remember now, you know, should be unbinding. Unbinding, binding desire means, I like it, I want this. No way. So I have already projected happiness in those objects. Uh, outside. So I insist, I persist, I react, I become angry. Now it is unbinding desire. You just said you like artichoke, but even if artichoke is not available, you are ready to eat. That is unbinding desire. So in the state of the unbinding desire, you say, I like this pasta, but even if the pasta is not available, I, whatever the food is available, I will eat that food and fill my belly because food, eat to live or live to eat. Which one you prefer? Eat to live or live to eat? One contains desire and projection and other unbinding desire. Hayden, every. Eat to live or live to eat? Eat to live. What do you prefer to say, Hayden? <laughs> I'd say eat to live. When eat to live, you, the desire and projection is not there. The impure mind is not there. You are happy. It is unbinding desire. I'm talking about mind, our own mind. 
that we cannot see, but by the effect, by the thoughts, by the feeling, by the emotion, we can understand this mind. And that is what we are understanding. Can you answer why we are understanding mind? <laughs> Ask questions, as many, then only you will be clear. Why we are studying about mind? So that we can live in happiness? Sure. And uh, another reason, mind is the cause of suffering and mind is the cause of happiness. So if I understand the exact nature of the mind, it's functioning my I can live in peace and happiness. Did you get it? So you see that every verse, they are zip files and we have to open it to understand it. And that is why we say that it is the yoga is a master and a disciple tradition. I'll just go before we go for another one practice. Uh, I have, uh, mind is spoken of two kinds, pure and impure. So I have explained it. The impure mind is constantly agitated. No, you are not agitated outside. You are not reacting outside, but you make a big face. Okay. How are you? Now I'm good. So you are holding something inside. <laughs> no, I'm just citing an example. So person with a pure mind, with a calmness, I have written soft and gentle voice, peace, smile, knowledge, attitude of self-giving. We will understand that later. Person with the impure mind, sadness, big face, anxiety, reaction, expectation, blame, complain, attachment. How many times you complain your parents, your house, people near you, Aiden and Avery? <laughs> That is how we can understand our own mind. At present, you both can smile, but uh, in, think internally. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then how many times every day we react, blame, complain? That is the reason of the impure mind. Don't tell me. Keep it with yourself, but understand. <laughs> So what the master is saying, can we minimize the frequency of impure mind in my thought, in my speech, in my action? I'm moving towards pure mind. I minimize desire and projection. And I use another word. <coughs> I drop binding desire. So when I drop binding desire, I drop projection. When I drop projection, my mind becomes free. In that freedom, we experience peace and calmness. So once you understand the nature and the function and the movement of the mind, and then you practice meditation or any practice that I have given you, what happens? I have written a lot, but that you have to, that we will go in the second round. So we will, did you understand the first part? Very good. Big girl, do you understand? <laughs> yes. No, no, big girl sitting in between both of you. 
<laughs> then now you see that we will convert this self-awareness practice that will include this verse so that our mind during the practice of meditation should also move towards the purity. Let us do it. Close your eyes. Sit or lie down. Whether you want to sit or you want to lie down, eyes are closed, the body is steady, mind is facing within. Now pay attention, let me go a little deeper into today. So when you say the body is steady, who moves the body? Mind. So if the mind is facing within, there is no question of movement of the body. One aspect. Second aspect, when the eyes are closed and the mind cannot see anything in the world outside, when the mind is facing within, that means all the sense organs are not running outside. So adjust the line, the body is comfortable. Now make the body comfortable. Make the body comfortable. How you make the body comfortable? You move the mind on the neck joint. Means what? Mentally you are looking at the neck joint. Be there, feel. What do you feel? Sensation, comfort, and steadiness. It's not that I'm saying that you, that, uh, then only you feel. When the mind is facing within, body is comfortable, you will feel that. No, no, let me understand it again. So move the mind on the shoulder joints. Remember, you're going to teach others so when we follow the preparatory step of being comfortable, we go to the joints of the body. So move the mind on the shoulder joints, be there, feel sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Move the mind on the entire, all the joints of the body. As if you are making a journey to all the joints of the body with a feeling, neck joints, shoulder joints, elbow joints, ankles, toes, knees, hips, all the joints your mind is exploring. And you will discover the moment the mind explores any joint, you will start feeling some sensation. That means we are releasing that impurity of the mind in that joint of the body. Sensation, comfort, and steadiness. <clears throat> now the body is steady, comfortable. In that state, what we do first understand then we will start the body remain totally comfortable and steady we will do the short and the quick breathing through both the nostrils into the chest so that there is only an expansion and contraction of the chest uh, with a little sound of the breath and the mind keeps looking inside the heart in the space, in the darkness, the emptiness. And today, because when I say it is an advanced practice, we will do it minimum for three minutes. So in that state of the steadiness of the body, start breathing quick and short breath through both the nostrils.
Continue, quick, short breath, no stopping, no movement in the body. Rhythmic breath continues. Continue, quick, short breath. We are doing for three minutes today. Continue, no movement in the body. Continue, the mind would love to move the body for the sake of reaction. And we are asking the mind, you follow me. Do not follow yourself. And do nothing, no movement in the body. Stop this breathing. Just experience the sensation. Maybe relaxation. Maybe a kind of freshness inside the head. Maybe a tingly sensation. All are good. Why, what I, why I said so? so that when the mind wants to react because of an unusual sensation, tingly, we tell the mind, come on, you're doing a practice. It is good for you. And now we will do the humming in the self-awareness practice. We do the quick breathing and the humming. So take a deep breath into your belly, then into the rib case. Keep your focus inside the forehead and make the humming sound 10 times. Mm. Louder, longer, Deeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank 
Instead of the humming sound, doing nothing, experience the change, the sense of calmness, relaxation, stillness in the body. Keep looking inside the forehead in the space where we don't see a lot of thoughts. That is the right moment to contemplate and reflect over the mantra. That makes the self-awareness practice an advanced practice. So you already know the mantra, Asatoma Satgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya, Mrityorma Amradanga. So we will contemplate and reflect on this. So the first part of this contemplation, looking inside the forehead in the emptiness, you say it mentally three times. You are saying it mentally. I'm doing it loudly. Now we will keep in mind that why we recited three times in the beginning. Our speech means our words that we have spoken should be clear. If I do not speak your name correctly, then you, I cannot draw your attention. Hello, oh, Casey, every Hayden. You see that I draw your attention. So we draw the attention of the mind by simply reciting the meaning of the, not simply reciting, by knowing the words that we have to recite. Next time again, we will do it mentally with the meaning. What is the meaning? Mu lead us from the false to the truth. So with that meaning in your mind, you are, ah, with that meaning in the mind, repeat three times. Asatoma Satagamaya Asatoma Satagamaya Repeat the meaning in English in your mind. If the meaning does not settle in your mind, it will simply become habitual, mechanical, it will not bring any result. Third time. Asatoma Satagamaya So we have a clarity of the word and the speech or the words in the first Second, we know the meaning. And the third time, with contemplation and meaning. So we will do it. Asatoma Satagamaya. 
And now say in your mind, it means lead me from the false to the truth. Now go to the next step in your mind. You are communicating to your mind. False means anxiety, duality, conflict, problem, suffering. And the truth means the real self, peace, happiness, love, and wisdom. So you, you're talking to your mind. Mind, you need to move from the false to the truth. Repeat in your mind again. Asatoma, satagamaya. You can start singing in your mind. So when you sing with emotion, you are attracting the mantra into your mind. You do it for three weeks, and I bet you that your mind, behavior, and attitude will change. There is another meaning. Mind, now I am working on you. You, I won't allow you to work on me. Working on me means impure mind. Impure mind means desire and projection. Deliberately, I did not take up that mantra. I have taken up the mantra that you know. The second line of the mantra, three times, speech, mentally. Tamasoma Jyotirugamaya. We pay attention to the pronunciation in the word. Tamasoma Jyotirugamaya. Next three times we do it with a meaning. Lead us from ignorance to knowledge. Lead us from misunderstanding to wisdom. That is the meaning. Lead us from ignorance to knowledge. Now we will contemplate. Because of the desire and the projection, my mind gets upset and it so I must get the right knowledge. What is the right knowledge? The moment I get upset, anxious, react, anger, it means I have a misunderstanding. I live in ignorance. I should remember. So communicate with your mind. Talk to your mind. Why I am saying so? You'll be amazed. All of our anxiety, duality, conflict, problems, suffering, pain, insert, praise, etc. expressed outside because the habitual impulsive mind repeats. Now what we are repeating? We are repeating Asatoma Satagamaya with a communicating to the mind Tamasoma Jyotirugamaya. It demands three weeks of regular practice. What is going to happen? Instead of inside your mind will repeat this mantra subconsciously of which you even you may not be aware and you will remain calm. Third line. Three times, you already know the speech. And the meaning, lead me from death to immortality. That is the literal meaning. But for you, it is better to do the meaning. Lead me from freedom for the mind to freedom from the mind. 
So when I have become free from the mind, that is the meaning. So you communicate. Oh, it means freedom. Not freedom for the mind, but freedom from the mind. What do you mean by freedom for the mind? That will take us to the third uh, three repetitions. There is no fault of ours. It is because we have a misunderstanding, wrong notion. That misunderstanding and the wrong notion creates the blame, complaint, and reaction in the mind. And then the mind wants the freedom to express that anxiety, anger, reaction, fear. That is the freedom for the mind. I don't want freedom for the mind. I totally want freedom from the mind. Anxiety? No, I don't want. Reaction? I don't want. Upset? I don't want. Why I don't want? They, they have come because of desire and projection. And now, three times, when you say, Oh, mentally, move the mind deep inside the heart, as deep as possible, and then ask the mind to stop deep inside, and there you drop, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. I will do with you. You are doing it mentally, so you need not to control your breath. Mind has gone deeper inside and it stays there. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Repeat three times more yourself. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand, lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside. I know your experiences, bring the hands down. How are you, every? Good. I feel like I understand that mantra much more now. That's good. That is. That was my goal. How are you, Hayden? Good. It's definitely getting easier for me to get into the place where I'm not so focused on everything else. You see, my young friends, if you repeat it regularly, what is going to happen? Impure mind will say goodbye to you. Hmm. Impure mind will say goodbye to you. So we never make any mistake. You know, there is an, I perhaps an American proverb, human is to err. No, human is to peace and happiness. No error, no error. It is my mind that makes me crazy. 
It is my impure mind that makes me crazy. So if you remove that impure mind from your personality, life will change. I got a lot of thoughts, but I will focus on one. When we change the mind, now are you clear what is the meaning of the changing the mind from the impure to the pure? When we change the mind from impurity to purity, our brain changes. When the brain changes, your attitude and behavior changes. When your attitude and behavior changes, your personality changes. What do you mean by when personality changes? Means the way you think and speak and respond to the outer world in your personal, professional, social, family life, it changes. When your personality changes, you become a good girl. That is the goal of you, to become a good person. Did you understand? You can write down mind to brain, brain to attitude and behavior, attitude and behavior to personality, personality to think, speak, and act with a pure mind, good person. Aiden, are you a good girl? What do you mean by lifting your shoulders? <laughs> yeah. So if you are a good, become better. If you are better, become best. I'm a good or a nice person. So it kind of like depends on your definition of good. I'm nice and not mean to people. So, did you understand the mind, brain? Ah, then I said behavior and attitude and personality. Then, because of that personality, you think, speak, and act. Make you a good girl. Who doesn't want to be good? Do you find anyone who doesn't want to be good? So when we think consciously, when we reflect on it, then the life changes. That is what the yoga, that is what the meditation is. I have written something that I should, I thought that I should take it. You know, uh, if you desire for which we depend on the world, Desire, I have, I have wrongly perhaps written the unbinding. It has to be binding. Desire for which we depend on the word outside. I like pasta, so my mind is projecting the source of happiness is pasta. So now I feel hungry, my mind says pasta. Example. Hmm? Simple example. Now ah, your mind may say ice cream. So when the mind repeats the thoughts inside, forcing me on any object, it is a binding desire. What is the binding desire? 
I, I want to use a word that I have already written. What happens? Binding desire creates an emotional dependence. Did you understand? Emotionally depend. How do you know that you are emotionally dependent? See the beauty of this master's teaching. It used to blow my mind almost 40 years ago. Emotionally dependent mind means my mind has selected thoughts, feeling about a person, about a thing, about an object, about an event in the world. And the mind keeps on repeating it. When it keeps on repeating, it creates a desire and projection. The moment you have a desire and a projection, it's a binding desire. You have an emotional dependence, and that is the impure mind. The impure mind is the cause of the suffering. What is suffering? Anxiety, duality, fear, insecurity, dissatisfaction, unhappiness, sad face, etc. <laughs> Did I go very fast? <laughs> Do you see that? Mm -hmm. This is what happens in our day to day life. So I want to I wanted to stress emotional dependence means in sense of incompleteness in me, sense of fear, sense of anxiety, sense of insecurity in me. Not in me, I'm just citing an example. emotional dependence we want something from outside what we want something outside we want security we want peace we want happiness but it is not there so the mind goes and forth and it creates a sense of fear anxiety insecurity hi ah, should i give an example and women, I, I will not tell you from where, so that uh, I'm able to keep her privacy. Wonderful women, very intelligent. She used to ask all the crazy questions. First session, crying, crying in grief, grief because of the loss of mother. So when I talk to her, I realize why this grief is. And that she revealed to me after eighth session. Can you imagine what was the grief? Whether her mother willed property owned by her mother or the bank account. So the grief is due to emotional dependence on what? Money, wealth, assets, She's extremely intelligent. She asked me in all the first eight sessions, all the crazy questions. I said, how much you are sparing for me? <laughs> Once you get 
on his blood. <laughs> I'm an international beggar, so begging is not a problem for me. <laughs> she started smiling. Now see the other scenario. She knew that she was willed almost 50 or 40% of the, her wealth. Now, if this woman had, if the mother hated this woman, and her mother never had willed any money, will there be any grief? <laughs> That needs to be understood. So I asked her, she said, no, I have to think. I said, no, I know you have already thought of it, but you are not taught, communicating to me openly. You will have no grief at all. Did you understand, Hayden? That is how the emotional dependence Emotional dependence means binding desire. Binding desire means projection. So she has gone for three weeks to settle and to get all the money, and then she will rejoin me. You both are intelligent, Hayden and Avery. So this is what happens to the emotional dependence. So it is not on the wealth, emotional dependence, maybe on anything outside. I create an image about my parents and then I, I focus and that gives me an emotional dependence that will also cause grief and suffering and anxiety and crying. Do you want to be a strong person? So when we understand and do the practice, we move from emotional dependence to emotional freedom. Got it? Got it. Are you bored of listening to me? Not at all. No, oh, very good. Thank you. Aiden? I thought you said you're both listening, and that's why I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you feel bored? So, emotional dependence. Now, you did you understand the entire? In the process of emotional dependence. So that emotional dependence in Eastern wisdom, in yoga, we say it is attachment and detachment. So the moment when you your mind uses the word, I'm attached to this, I like this. I have to go deep inside my mind to see and check. What is happening, my friend? What you are doing? Come on. And there you start communicating. That is why we added the mantra for contemplation and reflection. Why the emotional dependence causes one million thoughts in one minute? I want, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And that is how we lose our calm and we start reacting. Manohi devidham proktam 
शुद्धम च अशुद्धम च अशुद्धम काम संकल्प शुद्धम काम विवर्जित इन वन वर्ष एंटायर योग If you contemplate and reflect and communicate with your mind again and again on this verse, life will change. Yes, before I go, so I explained about attachment, detachment, emotional dependence, impure mind, desire and projection. With reference to Asatoma, Satyagamaya, Tamasoma, Jyotirgamaya, Mrityurma, Mrityagamaya. This is a higher level that we have done today that we combine the different verses in the principle in order to have a deeper insight. What is insight? Insight means I'm 100% clear. What is insight? The moment I see Casey, oh, here is Casey. So that is also an insight. I need not to think. I need not to make an effort. I have a clear recognition. Right? Now replace the word Casey or the Casey with insight, the duality, conflict. You have an insight. Oh, no more. Done. No more insight. Only peace and calm. That is how we, we understood, understand insight. We use the word what? We. <sighs> now questions before we move further. I think I'm understanding. Understood. Very good. Oh, you have understood. So what do you mean by understanding? But I don't have any questions. That we will. We will now do the practice to realize in our day-to-day -day living. That is the meaning of understanding. <laughs> Uh, Hayden, we yes. realize that in our day-to-day -day life. So that makes a sense. Uh, yes, I can go there also. I can move. I'm thinking go to the synergy practice. Yes, we will go for synergy practice later. Uh, let let us talk about let us talk about uh, once you have understood the desire you know first thing is the likes and dislikes why there is a like and dislikes because i find the source of happiness and sorrow in a particular thing, right? So when I see the source of happiness, then what happens? I have an attachment. When I see the source of unhappiness, then I have a detachment, right? I'm using another uh, topic for 10 minutes, and then we will go for another practice. We are going a little deeper into the desire. I don't remember, I don't know, you know. I just put a file and I sent to you and then I thought that it will cover, but then it is better to talk because you just told me that you understand. So we are exploring the very process of a desire, How? what happens? So first thing that I like something, I will not go into detail that why we like some, why mind likes and dislikes. That's another topic. So we like something, like means 
I, my mind perceives the source of happiness in that person, in that object, in that world. Clear? Mind finds the source of pain, so it dislikes. Clear? So, for example, I see the light, then the source of happiness is that object. So my mind constantly thinks and thinks and thinks subconsciously. You even do not know. Huh? Thinks and thinks and thinks and that thinking causes attachment. So the very thought supported by attachment and the source of happiness is desire. Because it has already projected happiness there. Am I able to make you understand? I like it. So I like it. My mind has already created a source of happiness with a feeling and emotion, a sense of emotional dependence. So it thinks and thinks and thinks. So attachment. So it means the thought has a feeling of attachment, has a feeling of source of happiness, is a desire. Uh, now, desire fulfilled. If the desire is fulfilled, the mind says, repeat it. You eat one ice cream, you like it. Second time you go there, you again say, mind says, no, I like that ice cream. Do you see that? Oh, just out of spontaneously. Oh, no, no, I like this. I will have this. Oh, I'll have Coca. No, no, no. I will have Pepsi. Or no, I'll have this. The mind says, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. So now see the repeat. You repeat first time. It's okay. Second time, okay, more or less. Third time, okay. Fourth time, your happiness decreases. And when you repeat 10 times, your mind says, I do not want this. Did you understand? I do not want this. And that results into frustration. And the mind again starts running. Mind starts running after another object. Another object. Why it starts running after another object? It says source of happiness. And that is how we remain, we live our life in frustration and anxiety and duality and karma. Life is gone. You demand something from your parents and they fulfill once. Mind is increased. Because if you do not know these principles, then the mind is increased. No, let me demand another. Third demand is also fulfilled. Now the fourth demand. Dad says this is too much. That makes you upset. Do you see that? Your mind is impure. That makes you upset. Dad did not make you upset. Parents do not don't make you upset. Frustrated. And all dads are crazy in this world. I also used to think about it when I was a few days. Not a big deal. It happens. But now you are young in learning. I did not learn at your age. I started learning at the age of 18, 19. So you are lucky enough. Not that I'm teaching you, but because this, this knowledge, if it goes into your mind, 
and the mind becomes pure. So what happens? The mind, the desire is fulfilled, the greed and the pride and the ego takes over. Desire is not fulfilled, the anger, hesitation, duality and a conflict and a strong sense of hatred enters in our mind. Entire process of desire. I know you want to be a good girl, good person in the world. Think of this. I'm not saying, I'm not forcing you, but think. Think, okay, I want to be a good person, confident, peace. Keep smiling, you know, I know you can. So this is another way to understand desire. There are many ways to understand desire. So we will be doing, I know, you might be feeling physically tired sitting for one and a half hour, lie down. We will go for another practice. We will go for synergy practice, lie down on your back. Uh, so lie down on your back and eyes are closed and the hands are on the floor, ground, mat, near the thighs facing up. The legs are fairly straight. We will engage body, breath, brain, mind consciously with the knowledge. So when I say synergy of the body, breath, brain, and the mind, we will have a stretching and the stillness in one part of the body. With regard to the breath, we will have a deep silence and slow breath. When that part of the body is stretched and still, and while breathing deep, silent and slow, the mind moves with the breath, singing mentally, Om Shanti. So we will use uh, all the four, body, breath, brain and the mind. So keep your right hand, or keep it on as it is, but now stretch your all the fingers of your right hand. The fingers are widely open so that you feel the stretching. And now stiffen and tighten the forearm, the elbow, from elbow to the shoulder, the entire right arm. Right arm is stretched, tightened. It remains tight and stiff. Yes, every it remains tight and stiff. Don't loosen it. First thing that we have done now, start breathing deep, silent and slow. Inside the right arm, from the shoulder to the fingertips, singing in your mind, Om Shanti. But remember, the right arm remain totally stiff and tight and stiff. The rest of the body is totally relaxed. No more, no more tension in any other part of the body. And uh, so the, the breath is moving deep, silent and slow. The right arm remains stiff, tight, stiff. It doesn't move. And you feel the tension. You keep that tension intact. I'll tell you why later after the practice. Please continue, no more movement in the right arm. It is stiffened, it is tightened, it is still. And you are breathing deep, silent and slow. And you are singing Om Shanti. Continue, continue. Come on, Hayden, your entire right arm should be straight and tighter. 
Look at the every the way every is doing. It should be totally straight. Yes. That is the way it should be done. And release the stretching. Keep looking at the right arm. You will feel the sensation, maybe tingling, maybe calmness, relaxation, more energy, etc. So now pay attention. Understand it. You have an anger that is coming from the brain due to the outer situation. Now, if we give a break to the outer situation, do not trigger your brain to be angry. That is why we are doing deep, silent, and slow breathing. But we are also exciting the brain. Come on. Here I am. I have stretched and tightened, gave too much of tension to the body. Do you want to trigger? Do you want to react? Because of the breath and Om Shanti, it does not react. So what is going to happen if you are doing the practice regularly? Ah, the brain will say, no, I'm not in danger. I'm not going to react. That result will come. So now we will follow the same way, stretch and tighten the left arm. First, wide open all the fingers of the left arm. You feel the stretching, tightening and stiffening on the palm, the forearm, elbow, the upper arm. The entire left arm is totally tightened instead. You start breathing deep, silent and slow into your left arm and the mind is singing Om Shanti. I know the mind will react. Why the mind will react? The brain will say you have already, your left arm is so tense, I need to react. But you are doing deep, silent and slow breathing, moving the mind inside the left arm and dropping Om Shanti gently while keeping the left arm so much of tight and still. You're telling the brain, let me give little more stress to the left arm. And the same time you are breathing deep, silent and slow breathing that prevents the brain to react mechanically. And if you are doing it regularly, I can bet that your attitude and behavior are bound to change. I can promise you if you are doing it at least for three weeks, two times a day with understanding. Continue, continue. Your left arm is still tight. The rest of the body is relaxed. And then see what happens. I added Om Shanti, so in the paper you can add later Om Shanti also. So no issue, first you do it. Yes, it is still stretched, tightened, breathing, and deep, silent, slow, and Om Shanti is happening. Okay, release the stretching. Release the stretching. Just experience the change. Maybe tingling, numbness, relaxation, freedom are from the tiredness and fatigue. I told you that you are giving tension to the body, but to prevent that tension to go to the brain so that the brain reacts impulsively, 
you are doing the deep silent slow breathing and doing the om shanti you don't allow the mind to carry the messages of the tension in the body given consciously to the brain so brain understands it but brain is not allowed to react it will give you such a tremendous power, mental power. Let us, we will be doing with the right leg. Stretch your right leg. The toes are stretched. Uh, all the toes are stretched outside. You feel the stretching in the ankle joints, calf, muscle is stiff and tightened. The kneecap goes up. The thighs become stiff. The rest of the body is relaxed. Start breathing deep, silent and slow while singing Om Shanti. Rest of the body is totally relaxed and calm, lying on the floor, except the right leg. The toes are stretched out pointing outside away from your body so that you have a pressure on the ankle joint the calf muscles are totally stiff and tighten the kneecap the thighs the entire right leg but at the same time you're breathing deep silent and slow dropping om shanti deep inside while moving the mind Beautiful, no loosening, tightened state of the right leg should remain there. And leave it relax your right leg do nothing experience the changes the sensation relaxation energy tingly everything is okay now we'll be doing on the left leg uh, stretch and tighten the left leg all the toes are pointing away from the body so that you have a stretching on the ankle joint, the calf muscles are stiff and tight, and the knee gap knee cap goes up. Thighs are stiffen, and you start breathing deep, silent, slow, moving the mind inside the left leg with Om Shanti during inhalation and also during exhalation. Remember, during inhalation and exhalation, your left leg remains stiffened and tightened. Deep silence, slow breathing, gently dropping Om Shanti in your mind, but your left leg is totally tightened, stiffened, stretched. Stretched, stiffened, stillness. And yeah, release the stretching, relax your left leg also. So we did the right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. Now we are going to do the face because, you know, our face always have a sad face. So we should also 
release the stretching from there. How you do that? You squeeze your eyes, cheeks, neck and the throat, and uh, the entire face. As you inhale, move the mind clockwise, dropping Om Shanti. Exhale, anti-clockwise Om Shanti, but keep your forehead, eyes, cheeks, lips, chin, neck and the throat totally tense. Tense means stretched, stiffened, tightened, still. You know, you know what happens? That the brain cannot tolerate for such a longer period of tension. But we, we are asking the brain, you remain away. Don't interfere. So the brain does not respond quickly to the stress in the body. Detail will be explained by Casey. And now we talk of the physiological, neurophysiological stress, etc. So we give a break by deep silence, slow breathing, by Om Shanti. We are not asking, we are not telling the mind to pass on the stress of the body, the stretching tension on the face and the eyes of the body to the brain to react. So the reaction time increases. There's a lot of space. We raise our level of awareness. Continue. Deep. Silence. Slow breath. Om Shanti. But the eyes face tense. Neck and the throat is still tense. I hope once you return from the practice, you will say, I'm totally relaxed, fresh. I can go for another two hours. I will not teach today, but I'm saying you. And release the stretching from your face. The last point of the stretching of the whole body. How we do it first, you tighten and stiffen the right arm placed on the ground, then the left arm, all the fingers are wide open, check. Both arms are stiffened and tightened, then the right leg, then left leg, then your face, entire body. And now start breathing deep, silent and slow, moving the mind from the crown of the head to the tailbone, Om Shanti. And from the tailbone to the crown of the head, Om Shanti, and see what happens. The entire body. Now see that where you notice your mind loosens the part of the body. That reason is more unconscious. And from there, your anger and reaction manifest in the body. But by doing regularly, you will be able to notice. And that is what I notice in people when I talk to them, including their eyes and the face and the right, left arm and the legs. Continue the entire body, both arms, both the legs, face, neck, throat, forehead, eyes squeezed completely. And leave this relax, no more movement of the body. Continue doing deep, silent and slow breathing from the crown of the head to the tailbone, singing Om Shanti. Om.
while moving, exhaling, the mind moves from the, from the tailbone to the crown of the head, dropping Om Shanti. So what is going to happen? You will check that the body doesn't want to move at all. It stops thinking. The body doesn't move. It freezes. It more tingling sensation comes. You may feel as if the body is sinking. So that is the success in the practice. Oh, it will happen sometime. It takes a couple of repetitions. Continue, my friends. Do nothing, remain as you are. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand. Your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences, bring the hands down. Now is the time to shift. Sit and share your experiences.
That felt very rejuvenating. Oh, beautiful. Rejuvenating is the right word. Feel refreshed. Calm and relax. How are you, Hayden? I'm good. I was kind of tired because we're having more energy now. More energy? Ready to fight? <laughs> no, no. More energy also means refreshing. It is another expression of reason waiting. How are you, my friend Casey? I am well. Always good. It's it wasn't my favorite meditation, but I know to throw my likes and dislikes away. So for that, um, for that practice, when my tailbone would talk to me because I didn't even think about getting a mat, so it was on the floor, um, I was able to push that away and didn't yeah. sense it any longer. That is very important. That's a very good uh, way of putting it, you know. Yes, if we keep the likes and dislikes, at least we can keep the impure mind away. Otherwise, what happens, the mind rationalizes, the intellect rationalizes. I don't like means I don't like. It does not make any difference. I like means I like. I will not do anything except if I get an opportunity to do what I like. So I think I discussed about it that uh, you see that, you know, I give attention to this hand. So the mind passes on this information subconsciously, habitually, impulsively to the brain. So I tell the mind, hold on, hold on, remain calm. So when it remains calm, how we did it? We did it by deep silence, slow breathing. And we also did it by Om Shanti. If the mind does not pass its feeling of like and dislike, hate and ah, jealous or reaction to the brain, the brain is not going to react. So we are giving enough time to the brain to remain calm, wait, Nothing is happening. That changes the, not only the mind, but it brings the synergy of the body, breath, brain, and the mind. Every end, uh, head, and don't feel offended. Sometime I, I pass on, I tease you in order to understand more. So, so don't get upset. You know. Any question? Now can I pick up? Hayden? Um, no, I think I... Manuhi Dividham Proktam Chash Ashadhami Vacha. Second line. Huh? Does your mind rings? First line. Huh? Manuhi Dividham Proktam. Mind is spoken of two kinds. Second line. Huh? Chashadhami Vacha. Pure and impure. Ashuddham kama sankalpam, impure mind, present with desire and projection, and pure mind is absent with desire and projection. Shuddham kama vivarjitam. Uh, so, 